If you live to 90 years old, 30 years of your life will have been spent asleep. No other bodily occupation takes up this much time. So it's not surprising that sleep is thoroughly investigated and well researched. This is the first video on a series dedicated to sleep. Today it's all about the actual physiological process we call sleep. Enjoy! At a first, very unscientific glance, sleep is weird. It seems as though your body every night, your body knowingly falls unconscious just to randomly wake up in a few hours and pretend that you didn't just lay there for that long of a time completely knocked out. But sleep is also comfort. It's very enjoyable and it's absolutely necessary for survival. Sleep researchers have gone a long way to understand the inner workings of our body when falling asleep, being asleep and waking up. Let's just get right into the good stuff. Sleep is classified into two categories. We differentiate between REM sleep and NREM sleep. REM stands for Rapid Eye Movement. The N in NREM just stands for None. During the night, these types of sleep alternate in cycles. Typically, when falling asleep, you descend from stage 1 NREM to stage 4 NREM until you reach REM. During the night, this cycle repeats a few times. One key takeaway is that, contrary to what one would intuitively believe, you don't actually fall asleep and then stay in this very deep sleep for the whole night until you wake back up. Your depth of sleep varies throughout the night. Now, what do we make of these stages? What classifies them and sets them apart from each other? There are four different stages of NREM sleep and REM sleep consists of a single stage. Thus, we can generally differentiate between five stages of sleep. Normally, a sleep episode starts with NREM stage 1. The transition from being awake to being asleep happens in this stage. Your breathing, heart rate and brain activity slows down as you drift towards sleep. The transition also means that sleep is usually pretty light and the individual can easily be woken up by noises. The wake-sleep transition is also shown on the EEG by rhythmic alpha waves turning into low-voltage mixed-frequency waves. After the short stage 1 sleep, a sleep episode descends into stage 2. Sleep deepens, so you would need louder noises and more intense disruptions to wake up an individual. Contrary to its predecessor, stage 2 is where we spend the most time in our sleep. About half of the night can be sorted into NREM stage 2. The EEG readings show mostly low voltage mixed frequency waves paired with so-called sleep spindles and K-complexes both of which will be part of another video on the function of sleep. For now, it suffices to know that sleep spindles are believed to play a role in memory consolidation. Also, stage 2 lengthens with progressing cycles. As the sleep becomes deeper, the individual enters stage 3. This stage is typically only a few minutes long, making up at most 8% of a usual night of sleep. High voltage, slow wave activity can be read off the EEG. This amount of high voltage, slow wave activity increases in stage 4 NREM. During this stage, the threshold for waking up is the highest and sleep is the deepest. 10 to 15% of the night is spent in NREM stage 4. Rapid eye movement sleep gets its name from bursts of rapid eye movements, which only occur in this stage of sleep. REM additionally exhibits sawtooth waveforms, theta activity, and slow alpha activity on the EEG. Periods of REM sleep tend to get longer as the sleep episode progresses. Dreaming, by the way, is a thing that is often attributed to REM sleep. There are multiple characterizing differences in our physiology between NREM and REM sleep. In REM sleep, your heart rate, blood pressure and the blood flow to your brain increase. Muscle tone becomes absent, which is important to not physically act out your dreams. Also, your body temperature is no longer regulated as it drifts towards that of the environment. As mentioned before, we cycle through these stages, sometimes skipping single stages and moving up before going down again. Irregularities in this process can actually hint to sleep disorders. For example, people with narcolepsy tend to skip the transitional stage 1 and dive right into the deeper stages. This trait is also shared by newborns. We will focus on sleep disorders in another video on this series. But for now, this has been all for this episode. And thank you so much for your attention. 
For this piece, I heavily relied on the 2006 Sleep Disorders and Sleep Deprivation, a UNMED public health problem by the Institute of Medicine's Committee on Sleep Medicine and Research. Please make sure to read up on the interesting sections to get the whole picture. I've linked the paper in the description box. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more from this series or cognitive science in general. This has been Exploring Cognitive Science and I will see you next time. Goodbye.